Well, hello there. It is Monday, November the 29th. The, the Monday after Thanksgiving. Hopefully everyone had a wonderful Thanksgiving. I spent time with my family here in Austin. Went out to the property on Friday. And it was pretty much a lazy weekend. But anyways, looking for stories to, to report on. I noticed... This one article from the New York Times. I just had to create an account because I wanted to see what their opinion was on Austin, one of the least affordable cities in America, and how it became one of the least affordable cities. I could tell you right now how it became one of the least affordable cities in America, and that deals with the population of Austin, myself included, because I live in Austin. We vote for politicians that do not have our best interests at heart. They raise property tax every year. They got a housing crisis to where there's not enough homes available, which means that the supply is low, the demand is high, which is skyrocketing the price of homes here. And even apartments are expensive. Even though we get tons of apartments, we had a ton of living spaces downtown, but I think the medium rent here in Austin is around twelve hundred to fifteen hundred, and that's kind of like the mid range. You may be able to find something a little bit cheaper, but then it also goes up to the two K and the four K, depending on how close you are into downtown and where you are near the domain shopping center. But anyways. Let's go ahead and see what the New York Times is, has to say. I had to create an account to read it because the New York Times wants an account. So I made this account for you guys. I'm not paying for it, but I made an account. Austin, over the, few, over the last few years, is one of the fastest growing cities in America. Change has come at a feverish pace at to the capital of Texas with churches demolished, mobile home parks raised, and neighborhood haunts replaced with trendy restaurants and luxury apartment complexes. I guess certain areas have been done that, at least the area I'm at hasn't. The transformation has perhaps been the most acute felt across East Austin and the neighborhood of Mondopolis a 2.5 square mile patch southeast of downtown where unobstructed views of the ever-expanding skyline has made the historical black and Latino neighborhoods a sought-after community, mainly because the homes there are not the most expensive homes and people want to live in Austin, they want a good deal. So unfortunately, I'm going to use this I don't know, leftist word of gentrification. So as people come in that has money, they purchase up the homes. They actually make the neighborhood a better place in the long run. But the side effect is the property tax pretty much pays for most of the city's taxes. Uh, most of the school tax is done through property tax. So as your value of home raises, even though it's capped at a certain percentage, it still raises at the maximum amount, and this city council and mayor always raises it to the max. I think it's like 2%. So every year it's going to be 2% increase regardless. And we're the only city in Texas or a major city in Texas that does this. I think even Houston, which is much bigger, I think it's right at 1% or right below 1%. I think Dallas is slightly above 1%. San Antonio, I think it's somewhere around there. They're not doing the 2% threshold that they had to be cut off. But however, Austin goes for the full effect. And this is where I say our voting, our voting of politicians that don't have our best interests at heart is the reason why that. At the Montamentum is nowhere near abating. These days, construction sites and cranes feel more like a permit fixture across the neighborhood where long-time residents have watched with growing anxiety and chick coffee 
shops, yoga studios, and pricey bars of inch closer and closer. We knew it was coming, said Francisco Nuez, who for nearly two decades lived at the Cactus Rose Mobile Home Park until it was sold to a developer to make way for a amenity-rich apartments that now fetch more than double what he once paid for rent. I like how they have to throw the rich into it, turn it into a classism or racism article, which is really isn't needed. I mean, I understand the point that they're trying to make here, but I think it's kind of unneeded for the certain adjectives. A decade ago, Austin, the capital of Texas, often deemed a liberal oasis and a, and a staunchly conservative state was among the most affordable place to live. It almost seems like where Democrats go, the standard of living decreases, property values increases when it shouldn't be, and taxes go up. Now, according to the forecast prepared by the Zillow real estate company that tracks affordability, the Austin Metropolitan is, area is on track to become by the year's end the least affordable major metro region for home buyers outside of California. At least California is beating us. In an already suppressed suppress hot markets in Boston, Miami, and New York, the average of 180 new residents moving to the city every day in 2020, housing inventory is very low. Real, Realtor says multiple offers, bidding wards, and blocked, lo, blocked long lines outside open houses are commonplace. Everybody wants a good deal until it's no longer a good deal. Not to mention that there's a lot of companies moving to Austin, uh, which does bring economy back up, which adds uh, more money into the city where it normally wouldn't. But unfortunately, the housing market hasn't kept up with the demands of housing, um, mainly because Austin is kind of running out of space. Home sale prices in the city of Austin skyrocket to a record medium 536 thousand or five hundred and thirty six thousand dollars in October up from a four hundred and forty one thousand two hundred and fifty a year ago. They have more than doubled since two thousand eleven when the medium sell price was two sixteen thousand according to the Austin Board of Realtors, a trade group rental two has surged with the average cost of a 864 square foot apartment is now 1600 a month. Also, uh, the the other thing to note about property taxes, uh, the I think the realtor organization used to send the prices that homes were sold to an individual to the city or to the Travis County tax collector. They have now since stopped that policy mainly because the taxes are just ridiculously high on property tax. I think I'm paying, I think, almost 6000 a year, or for this year. I think it's like right under 6000 for the whole year for my property tax, when it used to be maybe 1200 maybe even 1100 back when I purchased this house over 20 years ago, 30 years ago. So something to keep in mind. And the fact that mine is probably that low is because I've held on to this house for so long. So the next person that were to buy this house might actually see maybe 8000 to maybe even 9000 property tax each year. With the University of Texas flagship campus gently rolling the hills and vibrant music scene, yeah, there's other cities that do it better. Austin has long been an attractive place to call home, but surging prices has created a brewing housing crisis that is reshaping the city of nearly 1 million people and pushing out mostly low-income residents like Mr. Nunes away from culture centers, transportation hubs, grocery stores, and other amenities that come with urban living, activists say. Now, that's not true. Grocery stores are kind of evenly spread out, to my knowledge, 
I mean, we got HEB, we got Randall's and a few other shops. And we also have corner stores, mostly in walking distances in most places. But I can't understand what they're saying. The lack of affordable homes has been underscored by a rentless site of homeless encampments outside the city hall and under busy highways. There, there's less homeless camps than there were a few months ago. We actually voted to pretty much ban camping or homeless camping. And they've kind of slowly will slowly worked on the, the issue. But it's getting better-ish to a point. Um, it definitely wasn't, definitely got a lot worse than what it is now. The city recently began efforts to clear them after voters approved a public camping ban this year. In 2008, while already experiencing an explosive growth, at least 35 Austin neighborhoods were undergoing some stage of gentrification. I mean, there's got to be a better word for this. I mean, I don't really think it's gentrification. I just think it's people that have money are coming into the neighborhood. It's not really race-related, but the more money that comes in means that the raising of the property value goes up, and when that attracts people of a certain income level, they tend to take care of their neighborhood better, or at least their, their homes better, because they kind of have that pride or that, 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 that drive to at least mow their yard every two weeks or once a month just to make their house look presentable. But I think the gentrification has a racial undertone. But I don't exactly, I mean, it, it kind of fits with the, the, the description. But I think there has to be another word for it that's not negatively affected. Because it does help the neighborhood. The only thing is that Austin could cap the property tax to help the lower income families that have owned their house for 30 years, but they choose not to. Another 23 neighborhoods were at high risk of Falling suit, according to the study commissioned by the city and conducted by researchers of the University of Texas, the number of are likely highly due today, or the numbers are likely higher today, said Heather K. Way, a law professor at university and one of the study's authors. You drive down the street one day and all of a sudden you're thinking, what happened to the apartment building that stood there last week? Said Miss Way, referring to the rapid Demolition of older housing occurring in some Austin neighborhoods. I mean, yes, the, the, this is an issue. But the thing is that a lot of these buildings are old. They're like 60, 70 years old. And they're rebuilding them up to the current code. And they're a little bit more better. I mean, they're definitely better. They're safer. They look nicer. They look more modern. Unfortunately, that attracts a certain crowd that has money, which tends to buy up the property, or buy, buy up the um, apartments, which causes the demand to go high, which means that they could afford to charge a little bit more. On top of that, property taxes are getting higher and higher, so the apartment complex are building nicer apartments to attract the people that can afford to pay. It's a it's a issue without a clear solution, unless you're going to go after the taxes and actually lower them to make them affordable. It's the higher taxes that it's causing Austin to lose the older residents that can't afford to live here, which is done by voting. The displacement of low income residents in the city, where about 13% live below the poverty line has concerned Austin officials to such a degree that grassroots movement led to hire the city's first displacement officer this year. The Fertili Jackman has been assigned the challenge of the task to prevent widespread gentrification, even as cranes continue to dot the skyline and the new structures climb ever higher. The other issue is that you're, you're going to see here in Austin, the traffic sucks. There's no way to fix the traffic because we've grown in a matter to where 
where the land that we have to build loops have homes in them. And the only way to build a loop is to purchase back the property, demolish the homes, which is going to add to the housing crisis. But it's not going to fix traffic because we're not going to do that because the cost is going to be way outrageous. Because even if you do intimate domain, you still got to pay the owners. Unfortunately, traffic in Austin is just going to get worse and worse and worse and our public transportation sucks. We don't have a public transportation. Even our rail line only goes only to certain neighborhoods and it only goes kind of in a straight line. I mean, I'm talking about the uh, the rail system, the metro rail. So we don't really have like a Chicago-esque style or New York style, which will be more beneficial, but we just don't have that, nor do we have the resources to build it because that would require either building underground, which, which means we have to reinforce certain buildings or tear down buildings as we put it on top. So it's still the same issue. Ms. Ms. Jackman said that the said while the plans remain in flux, her office will be allocating about three hundred million over the next thirteen years. Huh? That's not a whole lot. That's not even a million per year. Well, I think it may be. I mean, that's rather low to be honest. I mean, at least it's good because it's not going to be that lot will be spent on addressing displacement, such as securing more affordable housing in affected neighborhoods. She didn't mince, mince words when she's describing the challenges that lie ahead. In Austin, black and brown neighborhoods have been... I hate how they have to throw race into everything. I really hate. This is not a race issue. This is a tax issue, which is affecting poor people. Black and brown people do not have a monopoly on being marginalized and underinvested. It is a class issue. It's a tax issue. But who cares? I don't expect anything more from the New York Times. In Austin, poor neighborhoods have been marginalized and underinvested, Ms. Jackman said. She also said that she wants to expand participation of local residents in early process of new developments. We are saying development can happen without displacement. I agree. I 100% agree with that. The way that you do that is you freeze tax taxes on your property. If you own a house for more than, let's say, five years or 10 years, it's arbitrary the time that you want to put in there. You freeze the taxes both on school and the county and the city to where they will not see an increase in taxes. It's simple. It is simple as freezing the taxes at a rate. We do this for people that are over 65 and older and disabled veterans. We could fix this without displacement by freezing tax rates, fixing the, the, liabil the tax liability people have to pay to the city. This will do more to save these neighborhoods than any amount of money you're going to throw it at it. But not everyone is convinced a new displacement office will have a significant impact. Now that $3 million over the next 13 years, in a, in a aspiring for cancer, said Fred, Fred McGee, a local historian and longtime resident of Monotopolis, a neighborhood once home to the Formerly enslaved people of the Mexican migrants who came to work in the cotton fields. Were they really enslaved? Uh, I have to uh, look at the history. Um, I don't know if Mexican migrants were enslaved, but maybe low wages. Kind of like the how they did to the Asian immigrants when they were building the railroad. They weren't necessarily slaves, but they were paying slave wages, which was way below what they were paying the the African Americans at the time, who were former slaves, if memory serves me correct. On a recent day, Dr. McGee walked out of his home and pointed to in several directions towards construction sites 
or newly built luxury buildings. Not long ago, these used to be all wetlands. I um, mean, yeah, you shouldn't really build over wetlands. I mean, we sh far as as far as green, how Austin used to be green. Paving over wetlands actually do more damage than good. And it should really be incorporated within the build as you're building. Um, Houston is a good example of what happens. I think they flood every time a hurricane hits because they, the water has no place to go. Mr. McGee said, now all you see is new developments or plans for ones. Uh, we're almost done. Yep, we're almost done. Almost three paragraphs. The East View Ranch, one of one of them, on the land that was once the Cactus Rose Mobile Humble Park, the luxury complex has a sleek swimming pool, game room, and enclosed dog park. Nearly another apartment complex now sits on the land that was once occupied by a historic black church. Another black church built in the 1860s was demolished to make way for a road to accommodate all the new traffic. And the neighborhood salon, hair salon was replaced with a trendy South American bakery. This become a tale of two Austins, said Susanna Almaza, a longtime activist. The rich keeps building in our neighborhoods and the poor keeps getting to place. It doesn't end. Talk to your politicians. Ask to freeze your taxes. Clearly, we can't afford taxes, which is driving low-income people out of Austin. I don't know how else to say this. Um, let's see here. Does this really... Uh, it's not really more. It really affects me. I feel trapped here. Miss D. La La says, in the end, it is us, the poor people, who end up getting hurt. Who's to say they won't kick us out here to, you know, it's not so much that you're getting kicked out, you're getting outpriced, which means you're forced to sell, you're forced to move. If you're renting, you don't get any of the money back that you invested into the apartment complex, unless it has a weird structure where you actually own the living area, like a condo. The issue is taxes. Taxes are going up. There has to be a way that our city council must understand that we're being taxed out of our homes. Taxes are making Austin unaffordable. Now, I don't know the magic solution. I don't know how to fix it other than lowering taxes. Because the apartment complexes are only going to be luxurious in, to entice people of wealth to come to Austin so they could afford to pay the rent which in return the apartment complex can make a profit and pay the the property taxes. I don't know what the property taxes are on a, on a apartment complex, but there has to be another tax method. It can either be a residential tax where you spread out the taxes to where everybody's paying the same amount, whether it's a couple of hundred or 500, to where you spread out the liability to people and still keep property tax is affordable. Now, I got a plan, and I don't know if I'm going to be able to do my plan. My plan is to build out on my property, build a home there, save up money, still live in Austin, and when I get old enough to retire or I blow up on, on the interwebs where I don't have to live in Austin, that way I could retire out to my property and get some tax relief to where I'm not paying six grand or seven grand or even eight grand. I don't even know how much my taxes are going to be in 10 years, but I'm pretty sure they're going to be close to $10,000. That's, that's how terrible it is. It is here is like, I don't know if I could afford here and I make decent money. Anyways, leave a comment down below what your thoughts are. Would you ever move to Austin? Are you going to avoid Austin? Keep in mind that Dallas and Houston are actually more affordable than Austin is. So leave a comment down below what your thoughts are. Smash the like, smash the like and subscribe button on any and all platforms or just a platform you're currently watching. But most importantly, 
Have yourself a wonderful day, morning, or evening.